Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to look at player motion. First off, we're going to go into build mode, and I have several triggers, objects, and scripts already in the world. I have two spawn points, I have two cubes, and two triggers, and then two scripts. Both of the triggers are set to trigger on players. This trigger has the player movement script, and this trigger has the player respawn script. This cube is just for visual, so I know where this trigger is, and then this one we're going to use as a potential spawn location. The difference between these two spawn points, this one is going to be set to spawn on start, and this one is not set to spawn on start, but has set position only set to on. And I have adjusted the player gravity and player speed on this one as well. Now to cover the player movement, I'm going to open up our player movement script, and since it's going to be connected to a trigger we're going to go down to player events when trigger is entered by player and then we're going to go to motion scroll down to player motion we have several code blocks that we can uh, choose from we're going to focus on these two first set player speed and set player gravity and it requires a player variable so we'll just drop in the player who's entering the trigger and it gives us our default values 4.5 for speed and 9.81 for gravity. 9.81 is earth gravity. So if we wanted our player to move faster than 4.5, we can just change this to say 10. And then if we wanted to simulate maybe outer space, we can set that to zero. And now when our player enters the trigger, our speed and gravity will change. So if I just reset the script quick. Well, why is it really close to my face? And when I enter the trigger, so you see how fast I'm moving and I'll jump quick. And now once I go into that trigger, I'm moving much faster. And then when I jump, it's not working because I have zero gravity on and I can actually leave the plane here. And now I'm kind of, I have no control over my like which direction I'm actually going here. There we go. And here's our warning. Player gravity zero is out of the valid range 1.8 to 9.81. And now we're going to look at adding and setting physical player velocity. So when we add, it is adding to the player's current velocity. So if we wanted to add to the player's Y, so let's say we give it 10. So now if we go in and go into the trigger, this will actually not work because we have to change a setting. These last four require a special setting. As we see, we get an error using add player physical velocity, but the world is not set up for custom player manipulation. So we have to go to world player settings, scroll all the way down, and make sure this is toggled on. It doesn't always take, and it's always in a weird position. So we just got to toggle it off and on a couple times, and then that should work now. So now if I go in, go into, and now I'm getting launched in the sky. The reason that uh, I am continuing to fly in the air is because my gravity is set to zero, so if I change this back to 9.81, go in. Now it's just going to jump me a little bit. And that's a lot more than a jump would give, so a jump is this, and then this is me adding physical velocity to the player. Now if I wanted to set, so what that do does is it doesn't add, it just that is what it is. So if I give it the same variable and then let's see, let's zero out this add. 
So now it's not going to add to my physical velocity. So if I have a velocity when I hit this trigger, it'll zero out my velocity and then turn it into this. So if I go in and I just I jump up. So it looks the same, feels the same, but if I was were going into that with velocity already, like I'm bouncing on it. Now if I were to do that with this, get rid of that, it's going to be a little different because before I was setting my velocity to 10 every time and now I'm adding to that velocity and since I'm going down my vector velocity is a negative and I'm adding to it so it kind of cancels out a little bit and then I just fall to the ground. So that is the difference between adding and setting player velocity. The next would be, so I'm going to get rid of these for a quick second. We're going to move player by offset and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the player by one on the X and then the X is actually these directions and since it's a positive one I'll go that way because this is the positive X. Now if I go into the trigger and now bam I'm over I'm one meter to the right of where I was or I could so if I just get rid of move player by to move player two and I zero out everything, so this will be zero, zero, zero in the world, but I'm going to give it a one on the Y just so I don't fall through the grid. And if I go through the trigger now, now I'm all the way over here. So I moved two, zero, one, zero in the world coordinates. And that is it for player movement. We have one more code block, and that is this respawn player. And that's going to go in the next script. So we're going to close player movement and open player respawn. And then this is also on a trigger. So when, so we go to player events. When trigger is entered by player, then we'll go to motion, scroll down to player motion, and grab our respawn player. Now, if we look at it, we get rid of self. It's respawn player to spawn point. Now it has to be a spawn point. If you create an object variable and you set it to say something like a cube it won't respawn the player and you'll get an error saying unable to execute respawn action or something to that effect so we need to create an object variable we're going to call it spawn point drag that in and drop it there and now we'll open up our where I had it open our object panel for our respawn trigger and we'll just drop in our spawn point. And notice this one is not spawn on start. And just to show you what happens if you have multiple spawn on starts is it'll randomly select one of those. So if I now if I go in, I'm over here and now I'm over here. It'll, it'll, it just picks one of them at random. So I'm going to turn this spawn on start off and I'm going to set position only off. So what this does is if you have it off, it will rotate the player in the direction of the spawn point. So for, for instance, this way. So positive Z is your forward. So if the spawn point is in that direction, then when the player spawns in, he'll be facing that way. If it's back like this, then the player will spawn in facing that direction. But if you don't care in which direction, or if you want them to retain their rotation, then you can just set position only. It's still going to affect the player's gravity and player speed. As we'll show in a minute, let me just drop in our spawn point into our trigger. And now when I go off the world and hit our trigger, I get respawned. And my rotation didn't change. 
and my speed is a lot faster and if I jump my gravity is a lot lower. So this could be an issue if you leave the gravity at 9.81 if you never change it then you can leave these as default which is 9.81 for gravity and 4.5 for speed and it won't be an issue but if you do change the player gravity and speed then this will be an issue so instead of using the, sp the spawn point you can use the cube but we have to use the move player 2 rather than the respawn. So we go down and we'll have to use move player 2 position and then you go player and then you would go position of so operators scroll down to tra object transform and position of spawn point. So now if we were to set these to something crazy like that and I hit reset instead of respawning I'm just moving to that position so my gravity and my speed do not change so let's reset these to let's see here 9.81 and 4.5 which are the defaults and say you want the player to rotate again you'll turn that off and then we'll have to use the respawn player code block under player motion player spawn point go off the grid and now I'm in the orientation of the spawn point it's this type of trigger is very important to have in every world if you don't have this in your world, I highly suggest you add one. Just in case the player is somehow gets out of the boundaries of your world, falls through the floor, there's a couple glitches that people know how to do that will allow them to clip through collidable objects. It's just a good safety net to have because if people do fall off, fall out of your world, then they uh, then they kind of get. I don't know if I can actually show you what happens here. So if I were to remove this and I jump off, I just fall. Keep falling, keep falling, and then I eventually hit this invisible floor and I can't I can't get back up there. And the only thing you can do from down here is leave. If you have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns about this video, or have any suggestions for a future video, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video, if you learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos. I tend to come out with videos every Monday. Sometimes they get pushed to Tuesday, depending on how real life is treating me. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.